Today we're talking about our new RS3 indexer drive. This drive can be used both in single phase and three phase at 240 volts AC. The motor I'll be using is an R2AA04010 FXP motor. I have two power connections, one for main input power and one for control power. I have the communication cable, a mini USB to USB and a step up 200 volt transformer. CNA is for your main input power and your control power connector. CNB is for your motor power connector. CN3 is for the battery backup for absolute encoder. EN1 is for your motor encoder connector. CN4 is for your safety torque out function. CN1 is for your input and output cable. CN5 is of no use. PC is for your communication cable. I will have all the wiring diagrams needed for this drive in the description below from main input power to your input and output cable to your encoder cable as well. Once you have connected your main input power, your control power, and your motor encoder connector, you're ready to initialize the drive. Please do not connect your motor power connector since we need to change a few parameters before being able to run the motor. So once you're ready, you can initialize the drive. And as you can see, I have an alarm on my drive. I will show you how to change system parameters on the next step as well as diagnose your drive for any other alarms as well. Once you have initiated the drive and connected your communication cable, you can double click sand motion motor setup. You can find this software on our website and I will also have a link in the description below where you'll be able to find and download the software. As you can see, I already have an RS3 a01a0ca4 drive connected you click add access and then you click connect once this dot has turned green uh, you could close this tab on the left hand side we have uh, different tabs our communication parameter monitor diagnose test operations servo tuning measurement and point data I'm gonna go into parameter and select each group we need to change a few parameters before we could actually run the motor um, First one would be your main circuit power input type. Default, it is three phase. Uh, however, I am using it in single phase, so I would change that parameter. If you are using it in three phase, uh, please disregard this parameter and leave it as is. Then click OK. Next would be your encoder type. So default, it is battery backup absolute encoder. Um, there's also single turn absolute encoder and battery less absolute encoder. So depending on the sensor you have, so we have a S sensor, P sensor, H sensor, and R sensor. So uh, depending on which one your motor has, you would uh, select one of these accordingly. I will select battery less absolute encoder and then click OK. Uh, next would be your battery backup absolute encoder function selection. So um, again, depending on your type of sensor, you will select either absolute system or incremental system. I will leave it at absolute and click OK. Uh, lastly would be your absolute encoder resolution so um, this is where you change the resolution of your encoder if you don't want to use the full resolution um, you would change it here I will leave it at default and click OK uh, lastly would be your motor code so click motor parameter and then select from the list so like I told you guys um, not to connect motor power connector since we want to ensure we have the correct motor code on the drive um, so depending on either 100 volt, 200 volt, and 20 amp, 30 amp, 40 amp, um, you select you select one a motor from the drop down menu. I am using an R2AA04010F motor, so I'll click that one and then click OK. Uh, once you have selected all your system parameters that you need to change, you write an amplifier, and once it has loaded, you will need to power cycle your drive. So you close this tab, double click axis one and then axis one is disconnected is it all right click OK so now you could turn off your drive connect your motor power connector and reinitialize re your drive and you should no longer have any alarms on your system once you have connected your motor power connector and reinitiated your drive you could double click axis one and that should reconnect to your drive automatically once this is green you know you have connected so as you can see my drive has uh, no more alarms however if you're still encountering alarms you go down to diagnose tab and select alarm history and here it will show you um, 
uh, the alarm code, alarm name, and maybe a resolution of how to uh, fix it. So once you figure that out and you have you no longer have any alarms, you go down to point data and select point data setting. So this is uh, this is where we're gonna do our um, programming as well as um, setting some values for our uh, point data. So there's two ways you could change your um, point data settings. Um, so here where it says parameter setting, um, you click the cross and you have a little drop down menu. So here you could change, um, you click edit and you could change the moving direction. Um, you could coordinate increase direction and motor positive direction or negative direction uh, the unit so we have pulse millimeter or degrees I'm gonna leave it in millimeters uh, your speed position data decimal point your system resolution and your user resolution once you have changed everything um, and set it the way you want to set it you click decision and um, you can change the parameters that way uh, you can minimize this tab and then um, I'll show you another way so you minimize this you go down to parameter and select each group so this is the other alternative of how to change your parameters. Um, so you go here and then you go to group A. So under group A, as you can see, you could change your um, system velocity limit, your velocity limit for PC operation, your positive direction software limit, negative direction software limit. Um, you go a little bit down and then we have uh, your manual high speed your manual low speed high speed one step travel your low speed one step travel um your overrides and uh, you go a little bit more down and you will find your system resolution and your user resolution so there's multiple ways uh, how to change your um your parameter settings for your point data so um either way um they both work so you decide on how you want to change your parameters. So I'm going to go back to my point uh, data setting page. Um, so before we do any programming, we want to test the motor. We want to ensure your motor is working properly, even though you have no alarms. So you go down to the test operation tab. Here, um, there's another parameter setting box here. So you click edit and you could set your manual high speed, your manual low speed, your high speed one step travel low speed one step travel, jaw current limit for PC operation, XL, D cell constant, and your S curve acceleration. So uh, again, you could change it here or you could change it through your um, parameter settings. Once you have done, you click decision and then you click serve one. Then uh, you could choose, choose any of these functions, your high speed, um, your high speed travel, your low speed travel, low speed, high speed in the negative direction and then you could do a single step move so high speed low speed positive low speed negative high speed negative so um, as you can see my motor is working properly then you can click servo off so that's a simple way to test your motor make sure it's working properly um, if anything's wrong with the motor um, try to find out what's going on if it doesn't work it doesn't run and anything in that matter so now we're going to go into the homing tab. So we're going to execute the homing function. So again, you have parameter settings here, which you could edit. Uh, you could set your home position return type, your home position direction type. Um, you have your positive direction, negative direction, your um, home speed return high speed, and your home position return low speed. So you could change um, these parameters here. Once you're done, you click decision then you could click servo on and my original offset value is zero so that means I want my encoder to go back to position zero and as you can see my this is my encoder my current position of my encoder so you click start and you guys will see that my encoder went back to zero so that's how to execute your homing um, function once you're done you can click servo off um, you could always figure out if you, um, different positions, um, um, trial and error to see where you want your actual homing position to be. This is where you execute that. Um, lastly, your last tab would be your point move. Uh, I will get to that in a sec. Um, so now once you're ready, you could go down to point data. So once you have tested your motor, 
and ensure that it's working properly you could go down to point data um, here's where you would create your indexing program you have up to 254 lines to create your program so once you are ready to start writing you double click any point and this pop-up screen would appear so this is where you set all, um, each each point will have this pop-up screen where you could select your settings and your parameters so you can select your velocity your starting position um, your moving mode uh, your travel mode one your point data no setting your positioning operation valid uh, your travel mode two it's either final move or continue so say you have 10 lines and that's going to be your final move of your indexing program this is where you will select it as your final move travel mode three is reserve travel mode absolute incremental um, travel mode with but or without but travel mode shift stop or continuous so stop shifting operation, continue shifting operation. Uh, your servo gain select. So if you have selected a servo gain, this is where you will select it. And your loop mode selection. So either normal mode, unconditional jump, one point jump, or conditional jump. And then you scroll down a little bit more. And this is where you have your acceleration data, your S curve acceleration, deceleration time, your torque limit, your M output delay, your M output type, your M output code, interrupt start point, your dwell time, um, that is in milliseconds, please take that into consideration, your jump point, and your repeat number of times, so I'm going to change that to 2, then click OK. Um, so this is where you would um, edit all your points, um, depending on how many you're going to use, this is where you would edit all of them. So then you would, um, once you are done editing, you would have to write into the amplifier. So there's two ways you could write each point, um, the points onto the amplifier. So you could do line by line. Uh, line by line, you select the point you want to write onto the amplifier and click writing. And then um, this will select point that uh, writes the selected point to the amplifier. And then you click OK. So that's line by line. Let's say, for example, you have 10, 20, 30 lines you want to write and you want to do line by line. You would click write an amplifier uh, and that writes all the all the point data into the amplifier at once so then you click ok and it would execute and write all of them onto the drive so once you are done editing and creating your program your indexing program you go down to point move this is where you would test your points and ensure that you have the correct um, distance the correct velocity um, the correct um, torque torque limit so you click edit and you select which point you want to execute. So I'm going to start with um, one. You click decision, you click servo on, and then you click start. So it will execute um, program number one, I mean point number one. And once, you, once you've seen that it's working properly, you click pause and servo off. And then say you want to um, see point number two. You click decision and then you click servo on and then you click start so then it will do uh, execute point number two and I think it will go back down to position zero and then it will start the, the point so I think once it's at zero there it is now it's executing that point so you press pause to stop the point and um, this is how you test each point if you have to edit another uh, edit one of the points you go back to point data and you edit the point so that is how to create an indexing program on our new RS3 indexing drive